Making a website just got easier. Describe your business and click modify templates and all of your content will be generated for you on any template that you choose. This is gonna make you so much more productive than everyone else and the content that it makes for you is really, really amazing. Once it's done generating, we can just copy this entire page and go to our website and let's put in a title here and let's paste it and bam, you have yourself a website with your content on it. Then of course, we can change your website however you want, you have maximum control. So we can change the text, we can change the images or customize it in any way. Then you can view your page and you have an amazing website and it's so easy to make. Then you could do that for each and every page and then you're done. Hi, my name is Tyler Moore. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a website step-by-step -step with no steps skipped. You're gonna love it. There are seven different steps that we need to do to create your website. The first thing that we need to do is get your website name. You need a website name like yourwebsite.com in order to have a website. The second thing that we're gonna do is install WordPress. It used to be super complex, now it's super easy. WordPress is the number one way in the entire world for making a website, it's used by all of these different companies. Then we're gonna choose your design. You can make literally any design that you can think of, and you can also mix and match trillions of different designs. For all of these different designs, I didn't wanna just make something that looks nice. I wanted to make something that actually gets people results. So I began going to companies that are worth millions and billions of dollars, and I started categorizing all of the different sections that they have on their website. And over and over and over again, I found the same thing. They always had a logo on the left side and a menu on the right side. They always had a main call to action section, which is the main thing that they want you to do, like contact them. Then they have a prove it section with some sort of numbers or testimonials to prove to you that they're trustworthy. Then after that, they showed what they did and what services they offered. Then they had a section convincing you to use them, like a why choose us section. And after that, they usually had testimonials. And then a final call to action that was the same as the first call to action. And we saw this over and over and over again. And when I looked at other templates, I saw that they didn't do this. The successful companies have spent so much money researching what actually works and what actually gets results. So we integrated all of that research into each and every template, which is worth millions and millions of dollars already in it for you just to click and copy and paste right into your website. And this makes it the most researched templates on earth. After that, we're gonna create your content. This is just the base content. This is just a great, great, great starting point. Most people get stuck here. It's not the technical stuff then every template that you look at will have your content already in it. So this is a really super cool way to get your base content going, and it's super, super easy. Once you have all of your content, all you have to do is paste it into your website. And then of course you can change it however you want. You can literally make it look like anything. But the super cool thing is you don't need to get into all the details. All of these different sections and everything are created for you. So you can just find the one that you want copy it over and paste it. And then we're done. I'm gonna give you a couple more tips and tricks like creating your logo and changing your fonts and the ability to literally make anything with something called plugins. So let's do step one and get your website name. And maybe the most important thing, let's figure out how much everything is gonna cost. So we need to get four things and four things have a potential cost. The first thing that we need to do is get your website name. This is the same thing as your domain name. There needs to be a place for your visitors to go like yourwebsite.com. So this is something that's unavoidable and this costs about $15 per year. The second thing that we need to do is get hosting. Hosting is a computer that's on 24 seven that has super fast internet that holds all of your website information. So if you only had a website name, but no hosting, someone can go to your website, but your website would come up blank because hosting is where you hold all of your files and information, all of the text, all of the images and everything like that. So this costs about $10 per month, but I'm gonna show you how to get a discount so you pay much less than that in just a second. The next thing that we need to do is install WordPress. Luckily for us, WordPress is free. So we don't need to pay any money for WordPress. It's open source, it's free, and that's one of the reasons why it's so, so popular. And the fourth thing that we need to do is create your website. This could have cost you thousands and thousands of dollars, 
but since you're doing it yourself, it's also free. So in total with everything and all of the discounts, your website is gonna come out to be around $30 for the entire year, which I think is a super great way to have your website spread across the entire world. It may be a little bit more or a little bit less than this, but that is the base cost right here. So first we'll do steps one and two. We're gonna get your website name and hosting. And luckily we can do that at the same place. So all we have to do is open up our browser and then go to hostgator.com. That's H-O-S-T-G-A-T-O-R dot C-O-M and press enter. I get a commission for recommending HostGator, but I've been using HostGator myself for 19 years and I've been recommending them on YouTube for 13 years. I can't believe it's been that long. I really like them because of their 24 seven live chat phone and email support, but there are thousands and thousands of hosting companies that you can use. I've used some that are really just not good at all, but HostGator is super good. So I just stick with them. Now we have all these options up here. We can hover over hosting and we can see shared hosting and WordPress hosting. You would think that you would use WordPress hosting because we're making a WordPress website, but actually that's just way too much stuff and it costs more money, so we don't need it. What we can do is click on shared hosting. And if we ever wanna upgrade, you can always upgrade later. So just click on shared hosting. And if we scroll down, we can see that it's 375 a month but I have a little trick. If you scroll up and go up here and type in hostgator.com forward slash unlock U-N-L-O-C-K and press enter, then the biggest discount is gonna be unlocked. And now we can scroll down and we can see that it is 252 a month. And if we scroll up, we can see that there's three different plans, the hatching plan, the baby plan, and the business plan. The business plan is just way too much stuff, we don't need it, and we can always upgrade later. So it really is between the hatchling plan and the baby plan. The main difference between these two is that the hatchling plan offers one website, where the baby plan offers two websites. So if you know that you just want to make two websites right from the beginning, then you'd go with the baby plan but most people are just making one website to begin with and you can always upgrade later. So what I recommend is the hatchling plan for most people. So all we have to do is scroll down and we can click on buy now. Now it's gonna ask us, do we wanna register a new domain or do we already own this domain? You would click, I already own this domain and you would put it in right here if you purchase your domain name from somewhere like godaddy.com. So we can put in something like, I already own this.com. But today we're gonna purchase a new domain so we can just click on register a new domain and we can put in our domain right here. Once we enter in our domain name, it's gonna ask us what is the extension? What is the ending of our website? Most of the time people use .com, that's what's most familiar. But if you have a super cool tech website, maybe you'd use something like .space. If you have a nonprofit, maybe you'd use something like .org. The second most popular after the .com is the .net. But I usually stick with the .com because that's just what's most common. So we can just go with the .com. And now it says, okay, it is available and we get it free for one year. And if we scroll down, it's gonna ask us, do we wanna add all of these additional websites? And the answer to that is no. I don't think someone's gonna like steal your website and do exactly what you're doing. Of course, they just wanna make more money, but I really don't think that it's necessary. So we're just gonna leave all those unchecked. And if we scroll down further, it's gonna say domain privacy protection. What is domain privacy protection? By default, when you register a new website or a new domain name, your information like your phone and your email are registered in a database for anyone to look up. What this means practically is that you're gonna get some spam calls or spam emails if you don't have domain privacy protection. But if you don't mind somebody calling you up or emailing you saying that they're gonna rank you higher in the search engines, or they can redesign your website for you, then you can uncheck this and save $15 a year. So in the spirit of saving the most amount of money, I'm going to uncheck this, but just know that we might get a couple of spam calls or a couple of spam emails. 
Next, if we scroll down, it's gonna ask us to choose a hosting plan. We've already done this. We chose either the baby plan or the hatchling plan. You can have two websites with a baby and just one with the hatchling, but you can always upgrade later. So we're just gonna go with the hatchling. And then for the billing cycle, this is where a little bit of strategy comes into play. And that's because the longer the term, the more you'll save in the long run, but the more you'll pay upfront. And the shorter the terms, the least you'll pay upfront, but the most you'll pay in the long run. I think the best balance of both of them is the 12 month plan and that actually gives you the biggest percent off so you won't pay that much up front and you'll save a lot in the long run. Once we do that we can scroll down and we can create our HostGator account so we can enter in our email address, confirm our email address, enter in our password, then we can scroll down and enter in our billing information, like our first name, last name, phone number, address, enter in what country we're from, what city we're in, our state, I'm in California, and our zip code. Then we can scroll back up and then it's going to ask us, do we want to pay by credit card or PayPal? I'm doing credit card so I can put that information in here right now. Put our name on the card, enter in our credit card number. And don't worry, this is not a real credit card number. And the expiration and the numbers on the back. Then we can scroll down and it's going to ask us, do we want additional services? So for $35 a year, do we want to back up our hard work? And although this sounds really nice, we don't need it because on WordPress, there's something called plugins. That's the same thing as a little app or a little program that will allow you to do this for free. And we'll be saving more than $35 a year. So we don't need that. Next, we can scroll down and it's gonna ask us, do we want an SSL certificate? And while yes, we do, and that's because an SSL certificate is security for our website. So if we ever decide to take payments on our website, all that information will be securely sent to the bank. But the thing with this is this is just advanced SSL because your website really already comes with SSL. This is just advanced SSL that gives you a warranty of $10,000. So we can keep this unchecked. Next, we can scroll down and it's gonna ask us, do we want site lock essentials basically to protect ourselves from hackers? And the answer to that is also no. We'll save almost $36 a year. And it's a no because we can again download something called a plugin for free that will help us secure our website. So we can uncheck this. Then it's gonna ask us about professional email. I do like Gmail for my professional email, but your website already comes with email and you can always upgrade later. So we can make sure that this is not checked unless of course you know that you want it from the beginning. If we scroll down, do we want Yoast? And this is SEO for our website. Yoast is a good plugin, but we definitely don't need it right now. And we can download free plugins also that will help us rank better in the search engines. So I don't think that we need this right now. And we also don't need e-commerce tools. E-commerce tools are also free with WordPress with plugins. So all of them can be marked unchecked. And then we can scroll down here and we can enter in our coupon code, which is unlock, U-N-L-O-C-K, and press validate. And now we can scroll down and we can review our order. So we have 24 7, 365 live chat and email support for free, instant account activation free, money back guarantee for 30 days, our domain registration for one year, which is free, and our plan and the terms of our plan right here. And it comes out to $30.84 for the entire year. Now this may change, this may be a little bit more or a little bit less, but anywhere in between $30 and $40 to have your website spread across the entire internet is a super good deal in my opinion. So all we have to do is scroll down and click check out now. Once we do that, it's going to say congratulations, your account was successfully created. And you have definitely done the hardest part, which is just deciding that you actually want a website and doing something about it. And once we do that, we can then press my account right here. All right, so now we can close this right here and we have our website right here. But let's go to our website and check to see if it works. So we can open up a new tab and just type in our website name and we can see that our website doesn't work. And why is that? And that's because when you purchase 
purchase a new website, it's gonna take 10 to 20 minutes. Sometimes, but it's very rare, it could take 24 hours for your website to spread across the entire world. So right now it's letting all of these computers know that your website exists. So I'm gonna close this right now and I'm gonna go take a break. I'm gonna take a walk and I'm gonna come back in about 20 minutes and I'm gonna check to see if it works. All right, so I'm back. I'm gonna open up my website again and I am going to type it in. And we can see that our website works. A new WordPress site is coming soon. If you don't see this, then just wait a little bit longer, but it should work really soon. The next thing that we need to do is log into our website so that we can change all this, so we can make an actual website. In order to do that, all we have to do is go back into our account and then just click on edit WordPress site. This is gonna make it so that it auto logs you into the back end or the dashboard of your website. So now we can exit out of here and exit exit out of here. And the first thing that I like to do is to make a new username. Right now, it automatically assigns you a username, but we can't remember that and we don't know what the password is. So let's gain a little power here and a little control over our website. And let's click on users over here. And then we're gonna add a new user. Then we can put in our username. I like to add just my name so that I can remember it. And then we can put in an email right here and just put in your email, super important that this is actually your email. And then we can put in a password. Obviously you want a strong password, but that one was a little crazy. So I'm gonna make up my own that I can remember and definitely write this down somewhere. And super, super important, make sure that this says administrator because this is the highest level of authority for your website. Then we can click on add new user. And now let's log out to see if that works. So just go over here and press log out. And then we can go to our main website right here by just erasing all of this. It says our new website is coming soon. And in order to log in, you'll always go up to your website.com forward slash WP, which stands for WordPress, dash admin, A-D-M-I-N, which stands for administrator, and press enter. Now use that new user that you just created. So I'm gonna put in my username and password. And now we're logged in with our username, not some random username. Let's gain more control over our website by going to users, and we see this user right here, and let's delete this user. We don't need this user anymore. And just delete all content and confirm deletion. In order to go to the front end of your website, as your users would see it, all we have to do is click on this right here. And this will bring us to the front end of our website. Some people would charge you $500 just to get here, which is crazy. This is super, super simple. This black bar up here only shows up when you're logged in. So if we log out, we won't see any of this right here. We can see that our website name is called Welcome, which is not what we want. We want our website to be named our business name. So that's the first thing that we're gonna change. We can go into the dashboard by clicking on this welcome right here or whatever it says here. And then we can go to settings and right here it says site title. We can change this to your business name. Whatever your business name is called, we can change it right here. I'm just gonna name mine create a website. The next thing that we need to do that's super important is change the administration email address. So we need to change this right here and put in our email address. This is super important, but do not change this right here. If you change this right here, it'll break your website. Then we can scroll down and press save changes. Once we change this right here, we have to go into our email and confirm the change. So let's open up our email. And once we do that, we can go down here and click on this in order to confirm it. Now we've gained even more control over our website by having our email right here. All right, let's click on save changes just for good measure. And we can exit out of here and exit out of here. If we click on dashboard right here, we can see all of these things trying to pop out for our attention, like this big thing up here, this coming soon here, all of these things right here, and what is all of this? WordPress has the ability to install something called plugins, and plugins are like little apps or programs that you can install on your website. But sometimes the hosting companies just pile in a bunch of plugins onto your website because they want you to use these certain apps or programs. Now, sometimes this can be super helpful, but it's like when your phone is installed with apps that you don't want, or your computer is installed with programs that you don't want, sometimes you wanna just wipe everything clean and start from scratch. 
storage. And we don't want all of this popping out and cluttering up everything. We'll be installing some plugins later because they're super cool, like a contact form plugin, because by default, WordPress doesn't have a contact form, or a backup plugin, because by default, you can't back up your website. So we're gonna be installing plugins later, but we want it all fresh and clean so everyone is starting off on the same point right now. So all we have to do is click on plugins over here, and then go down, and we're gonna select all of them by clicking on this, and then going over here and pressing deactivate because we have to deactivate them first and then apply and then selecting all of them again and going over here and going to delete and apply then press ok and that's going to delete all of these plugins off of our website and now when we go back to the dashboard we can see that is so much better like a breath of fresh air it is all clean and if we go to the front end of our website by clicking on our website name we can see that that looks much better. No more red bar up here, and it looks just so much cleaner. All right, so we've deleted plugins from our website, but there's actually also pages on our website that we wanna delete. So we can go to our website name and click up here, and then click on pages, and we have these two pages in the trash. So we can click on them, and then we can go over here, and we can go up here, and we can delete permanently and apply. Sometimes there's also blog posts that we don't need. So we can go over to posts and we can see that they're in the trash. So we can click on trash. We can select both of them and we can go up here and delete permanently and apply. Now, when we go to our website, we still see that home page, but we don't see that sample page up here and everything else is super, super clean. But it may be clean, but it's not exactly how we want it. So right now, this is what our website looks like, but we wanna install a theme or a design that will allow us to make any design that we can think of. So that's the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna install a theme. This theme will allow you to make millions of different designs and it has a lot of templates that you can choose from. So to install the theme, all you have to do is go into the dashboard by clicking on our name and then we can click on appearance and we can click add new theme once we do that we can type in variations v-a-r-i-a-t-i-o-n-s and press enter then we can see this one right here and we can press install. Make sure to install this theme. If you don't, then this tutorial is gonna be different. This theme is gonna allow you to make any different design. If you don't like this design, then that's okay. We're gonna be able to make any design that you can think of. So just press install. And once we do that, then we can press activate. All right, now we can go ahead and check the website. So if we click on our website name right here, we can see that this website is now installed. This is what it now looks like. And it's even mobile friendly, so we can just resize it and see that it would work on your phone or any other device that you have. But this probably isn't exactly what you want. You want to add pages to your website and you obviously want to add your content to your website. There is a specific order that you want to do things in. First, we're gonna make the structure of your website, and then later, we're gonna add all of your personal touches. It's very important that you do it this way, and that's because most people will get stuck on the homepage, editing the homepage, making all the details of the homepage, but then not finish the rest of their pages. I've been teaching for 13 years, and it's not a good idea to do it that way. Most people never finish their website, and it's because they're just doing it in the wrong order. You have to be okay with your website not being perfect right from the beginning. It will be perfect eventually, but for now, let's just set up the entire structure. And by that, I mean, let's get all of your pages up right here. And then let's get all of your base content on your website first. And then after that, we can begin editing your website. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get pages on your website right here. We're not gonna add the content yet. We're just gonna add the pages. So to do that, all we have to do is go up and click on your name right here, and then go to pages, and then click on add new page. So first we need to make a home page. So let's just name a page called home, H-O-M-E, and press publish. And then we can click on publish again. Then we wanna click on add new page right here. And this one is gonna be called about, cause we need an about page. And then click on publish and publish again. And then we're going to add new page again. And this one is going to be called services. Now your pages might be a little bit different, but we can just click on publish and publish again. And then we're going to add a new page. And this one is going to be called contact because we need a contact page. Then click on publish and publish again. 
Then to go back to see all of your pages, all we have to do is click on this W. Whenever you see this W, that just means that we can go back. So just click on it. So now we can see all of our pages right here. And if we go to the website by clicking on our website name, we can see that we have all of our pages up here. But there's two problems here. The first problem is that this is out of order. The convention is to put home first and contact last. And the second problem is when we click on any of these pages, these pages show up blank. So let's fix the first one. Let's get these in order. So let's go to our main website by clicking on this and then clicking on our website name and then going to appearance and then editor. Once we do that, we can click on navigation and then we want to click hold and drag and this is going to come up right here and press detach. Then we can click hold and drag and drag it first. So it'll go home about and then I want services and then contact. And we can see that up here, home about services and contact and then click on review change and press save. Now if we go back to our home page and we click on this and then click on this, we can see that it's in order home, about, services, and contact. So all of these pages are still blank, so we need to add our content to these pages. In order to add our content, all we have to do is click on our website name right here, and then go to pages. And the first page that we're gonna work on is our home page right here, so just click on home. And now we can edit our home page right here but we don't want to just start off blank. There is a much, much easier way to do it now. All we have to do is go to tyler.com, T-Y-L-E-R dot C-O-M and press enter. All right, and here is something that I think is pretty magical. All you have to do is describe your business. There's some examples right here, but we have to describe our business right here. I'm just gonna paste in this. My friend is a surf instructor and he needs a website, so we're gonna help him out. And then we're gonna click on modify templates. Once we do that, we can scroll down and we can choose any of these templates right here. The huge mistake that most people make right now is that they keep on looking over the templates over and over and over and over again and they can't decide on which template to use. And that's a mistake for a few reasons, but the first is the indecision is gonna absolutely kill you. Making a decision, even if it's not the most optimal decision, is way better than doing nothing and being stuck in analysis paralysis. Any of these can be changed later. You can also mix and match any of these. So set a timer. If you see yourself spending more than three minutes, then you need to stop and just choose the island template. I'm gonna show you that you can make this look completely different from the way it is right now. So go ahead and click on it. Once we do that, if our business information is already in there, which it is right now, we can press generate content. And each section will generate right now. And it's super good generating base content for your website. All of these templates are also based on research. We went to hundreds and hundreds of million and billion dollar websites, and we saw what made them super effective and convincing. And we gathered all of our research and we made each of the templates reflect all of that research. So once we're done with that, we can copy this entire page right here and then just go over to our website. It's so easy. Make sure you're in this paragraph block right here where you can write. And then right click or press Control V if you're on a PC or Command V if you're on a Mac and paste it in there. Once we do that, all of our website is going to be pasted with our default content, which is really, really awesome. All right, right now is where people mess up and they wanna start editing, which you could. You could just start writing things right now, but please, please don't. You're gonna get lost in the details and never finish your website. It's a mistake if you start editing right now. All right, let's update our website right now and just press update. And now let's go back to our homepage and see if it's changed. Remember it says Ride Waves Now or whatever it says and click on our name again and we can see that the website didn't change. This isn't our content on it right now. And that's because we've changed a page called Home. So if we click on Home, we can see that it's changed. But this page called home is not set to the home page, if that makes sense. Like if you go to apple.com right now, we can see that it's not apple.com forward slash home, it's just apple.com. So what we need to do is we need to set this page that we named home to the actual home page. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's click on our website name and then we can go to settings and we can go to reading. And right here where it says a static page, we can go to home page and we can select home. 
this will set our page called home to the home page. Now, if none of that made sense, don't worry about it. Just copy what I'm doing step by step and it'll work perfectly. Then we have to scroll down and click on save changes. And now when we visit our website, we can see that it set that home page to our actual home page. And we have all of that content in there right now, but there are a couple different problems that you may have noticed. If we check our template right here, we can see that we have this font right here. And if we check our actual website, we can see that we have this font right here. Now, why is that? That's because we haven't installed Google fonts yet and we haven't selected our font. So we can go over here and we can see that in this template information, we have what the fonts are, but they're not on our website yet. So what do we do? Well, you would think you'd change it right now, but we're not going to. We're gonna wait a little time and we're actually gonna set up our other pages first. And then after they're all set up and we make some edits, then one of the last things that we're gonna do is change your fonts. So basically we're gonna do it later. All right, now let's create the about page. So right now it's blank. Let's go back into the back end of our website and then go to pages and we can click on our about page right here. Now we can go back to the island template or actually the beautiful thing about this, you can mix and match any of the templates. So if you wanted to use another templates about page, you could, but that might make it a little bit confusing. But in the spirit of simplicity, let's just click on this about page right here and then click generate content right here. And now we can see that it's going to generate all of this content for you, even with little emojis, which I think is super cool. And once it's done, all we have to do is copy the entire page again, and then go back here and press paste. Bam, looking super, super good. Let's update that. And let's resist the temptation to edit. And let's go back by clicking on this W, going to our services page, then going back to tyler.com, scrolling up, clicking on services, then click generate content. It'll generate content for all of our services. Then we can copy the entire page right here and go back to our website and paste it in right here. And then we can update that and now go back and then click on our contact page. Go to tyler.com and click on the contact and then generate content right here. Now when we scroll down, it will make all of our content and we can copy the entire page. And before we paste it, we should note that it's not going to paste in this yet. We're going to get to this later. This feature, just like changing all of your fonts, is enabled by something called plugins that we're going to get later. All right, let's go back to our contact page and go here and paste it in. And now we can see that that doesn't work right there. That's fine. It has all of our content in it though. So we're going to update that. And now that it's updated, we can go back by clicking on the W and then clicking on our website name. And now we have all of our pages on our website and we can check them, make sure that they work. We have the about page. We have our services page. We have our contact page without that contact form that we're going to get to later. So all of our pages are working great. We can click on our website name to go to the home page, and we can make sure that this is working and is mobile friendly. We can click on this menu and that works perfectly. Also, we can exit out of there and we have ourselves a website. Now, obviously it doesn't have all of your pictures in it and it's not the perfect, perfect, perfect content, but this is better than 90% of what people will do because people will never get a base website going. So you've already surpassed what most people can do and that's because you're following a much better process. All right, for now we can close out tyler.com right here. Let's just exit out of there. And by the way, we can find free, really great images for your website. The first one is pixabay.com, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y.com. The second one is pexels.com, P-E-X-E-L-S.com. And the third one is unsplash.com, U-N-S-P-L-A-S-H.com. The most important thing when downloading images is to make sure that the size isn't too large because that's going to make your website slow. 
So make sure the size isn't above 2000 pixels. So I'm just gonna search for all of my website images and you can download all of these images in the description below. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is probably the part that you've been waiting for and that's actually editing our website and getting all of those images on our website. So in order to do this, all we have to do is click on our website name and then go to pages and then go to home. And then once we're here, we can edit our website. So I'm just gonna do a quick overview of this. The main thing to know is that we can click on these three lines right here and get a document overview. Now this document overview is basically just an overview of our entire document. So these are all different sections of our website. We have the first section right here, the second one here, the third one here, which is all of this, the fourth one here, which is all of this, the fifth one, which is this, and the sixth one, which is this. You can actually make any of this yourself if you wanted to. You don't have to, and I don't think you should, because there are solutions already out there for you that I've made and other people have made that you don't have to redo any of this. But you should know what it means. So what is a cover and what is a group and how can you add anything? All you'd have to do is click on this plus button. And here you can just click and add any paragraph or heading or any image or any gallery. And if you scroll down, you can add buttons and columns and groups and anything else and if we scroll down more it just keeps going and going and you can add literally anything so when you hover over something it tells you right here what it is so a cover is an image or video with text over it and you just click on that to add it to your website if we click on the three lines again for the document overview and we click on any of these sections right here like this cover right here we can open up the settings side panel right here and it has both settings and style so no matter what you click over here, it'll have different settings and style over here. Sometimes it only has styles and sometimes it only has settings depending on what you click on. But for something like a cover, it has settings and styles. With the settings, you can do things like position the image. So you can go over here and position the focus right here. And if we scroll up, we can also click on style. And style is usually like the color or the sizes of the fonts. And we can see something called overlay. This is super useful if you have something like a very dark image, but you also have dark navigation up here. You can click on something like overlay and then click on the color and make it white. And then you can slide this over and make the image lighter. A lot of the times this really helps with the legibility of your text and so that you can see your navigation after you save it. Of course, you can undo anything that you did by pressing Control Z if you're on a PC or Command Z if you're on a Mac and just undo anything that you wanna undo. For the text to edit it, all you have to do is click on the text and we can just delete things or add things or make the text however we want. Once we click the text, then this side panel changes and we can change the color of the text. You can change the background of the text and you can change the size of the text. Again, if you don't like those changes, you can press Control Z on a PC or Command Z on a Mac and undo all of those things. Adding images is also super easy. All we have to do is go to our desktop and click hold and drag it in and then just let it go. Now that image replaces it and this website is looking already completely different just from one image. We can go ahead and do that for the rest of the images. We can hide this right here and we can hide this over here and we can just click hold and drag from our desktop and let it go. All right, for some reason that didn't work, so I'm just gonna click on Media Library, and the image is there, so I don't know why it didn't work, and press Select. All right, let's get in another image. Another way to get an image in is just to click on it, click on Replace, click on Upload, find that image on your desktop or wherever you saved it, and press Open. And for the third image, we can of course drag it in there, or we can just click on it and press Replace. And then open up the media library and we can just drag in the rest of our images. And now we can just select the image that we want and press select and it will show up right there. We can go down and do the same thing. Click on this and replace and open the media library or drag it in. Find this image right here and press select and it will replace and then go down one more. 
just click on it and replace and open media library. And we can choose this image right here and press select and it will upload right there. There are a couple of different settings though that I want to change for these images. And one of them is this guy is way too close right here. So how can we change that? And we can just click on it and press replace and open media library. And then we can go and we can edit image. So I want that guy to be moved down a little bit. And in order to do that, we want to crop it. And we want to take some of this off of it right here. So just a little bit like that. And then we want to apply cropping and we want to save our edits and we want to select it one more time. Now he's moved down because we cropped the bottom from it. And now that looks much better to me. The next thing that I want to do is around these edges because we're like surfing and everything is like water and soft. So I want to click on it and then open up this side panel right here for the settings. And then we can click on style because that's how it looks. And we can go to radius, which is the edges and put in 30. Of course, there are a whole bunch of other things that you can do with it like border, but I want to do that for the rest of the images. So just click on them, go to style, go to radius, 30 and do that for the last one really quick. And maybe we'll do this for this one down here. So we'll go to here and radius 30. And of course you can change it however you want. This doesn't look that great right here. There's way too much space and I think it should be centered. So what we can do is we can select this document overview right here and click on the cover because that's the last one, which is this one right here. And if we go to style right here and scroll down, we can see that it has padding. What is padding? Padding and margin are just other words for spacing. So to change the padding right here, all we have to do is just remove this, just delete it and it'll go to the center. Padding is spacing on the inside of this block. Margin is spacing on the outside. So it would push this block further away from this block. All right, we can also minimize this height right here. We can just click, hold and drag and make it smaller. And if we wanted to, we can just click on it and we can press replace and let's open the media library and let's cut off some water right here. So let's just edit image and let's crop it again. And let's just cut off some water right here so that it's just even and let's apply crop and let's save edits. Make sure it's selected and press select. And now it's in the middle and that wave is going through the words, which I think is pretty cool. I wanna show you one or two more awesome things that is really gonna save you so much time. And that is, let's say we don't like this section right here. We wanted, I don't know, a five star rating and a quote or something. What we can do is we can go to tyler.com so that's T-Y-L-E-R dot C-O-M and press enter. And you can put in the description of your business just like normal. And instead of choosing the island template, you can choose whatever one you want. Maybe we want this right here. So we can click on it. And even though this looks completely different from ours, we can generate content right here. It'll generate all of our business content. And once it generates, then we can choose anything that we want. So maybe we want this right here and we can just press copy section and we can go to our website and we can click on this entire group right here and we can delete it. So just go over here and press delete. Once it's deleted, then we can click on the main section here. And this is the easiest way to add it. You go here and you add after. So you add after. It's going to add a paragraph, which is perfect because all you have to do is paste it by right clicking and going to paste or pressing control V on a PC or command V on a Mac and it will put it in right there. And of course you can change any of the text or change anything that you want. And we can exit this and exit this and we can look at it and that's looking pretty good. I really like that. Now it didn't take the font and that's because we're going to do the font later. If we click on this template information, we can see what the header and the text are. And later we're going to install a Google font to change that. All right. So that's pretty cool. Let's exit out of there. And the last thing that we need to do to make this website perfect is to get the links working. So all we have to do is double or triple click on this and click on the link. Maybe we want this link to go to our contact page. 
So we just start typing contact and that's good. And then we go down and find any other links. Join today, that should be on our contact page also. And basically we want people just to contact us. So say hello. Yes, we want that to also go to our contact page. But of course you can have this link to your about page or any other page that you want. Once we do that, we can scroll up and press update. And now we can view our website and we can see that our website has changed. It looks completely different than it did before. And that's because the images are different and all of the sections that you copy over are also mobile friendly. So it works perfectly on all devices like your desktop, laptop, phone, tablet, computer, TV, or anything else. All right. Once that's updated, we can exit out of here and your home page is done. The next thing that we're gonna do is finish off all of your pages and give you some super cool tips and tricks on how to make your pages even better. First, let's edit the about page. All we have to do is go and click on our website name right here, and then go to pages and click on about. The first thing that I wanna show you is that you can replace this entire page right here. All we have to do is go to tyler.com and this is why choosing a template really doesn't matter because we can actually mix and match any of these. So let's just go to hike or whatever one that you want. And then we can click on the about section and we can generate all of our content right here by pressing generate content. And then it's going to generate all of your content. I think this is super cool. It can actually give you business ideas on other things that you can offer. This is super cool for brainstorming. So once we're done with that, we can copy this entire page and then we can go over here and we can click on these three buttons right here. Select the first one, hold shift and select the last one and then just press delete. Once we do that, we can paste it in right here. And we have all of this page's content onto our website. We can click on update and we're going to see one problem. Let's click on view page and we see that this is a little bit too dark and we can't see this menu up here. There's two different ways of addressing this. The first way is obviously make a lighter image so that you can see it. And the second way is with that overlay. So all we have to do is click on this cover right here and then click on the settings and then click on style. And then we have this overlay right here. So we can just click on it right here, this overlay opacity. And if you wanted to make it even lighter, click on it again and then drag it to white. And then we can click off of that and we can update that and view our website. And now we can see it. Obviously we need to change the text and everything else, but that's looking pretty good. We can exit out of all of these right now. And if you want to go back, which we do, you can just press control Z on a PC or command Z on a Mac. And sometimes you have to click on the image to do it and just press it a whole bunch of times until you get back to where you want. All right. So that's how to put a completely different page on your page. But if you just want to keep it super simple, like I do, then we're just going to replace these images right here. I have all of the images here and they're available in the description below. So right now we're working on the about page. We can just click on it and we can just click hold and drag it in. All right, then we can scroll down and find that again. And we can just again, click hold and drag and go over here, scroll down and we can click hold and drag in the bottom. There are a couple of different things that you probably already know how to do, but repetition is the mother of skill. So we're just gonna click on this and we want the words to be above the horizon. So all we have to do is go down and then just drag this to the top and we can't see it change right now, but we will once we save the page. All right. And we can scroll down and we're going to change this right here. So just click on this image and we'll go to style right here and the radius will be 30. And all we have to do is scroll down right here, click on cover and then go to style and we want to remove this spacing right here so we see padding right here and we just remove it remember padding is the same thing as spacing so now that's removed we can go up and we can go to settings and let's change this let's make this all the way to the top and it'll make more sense in a second and we can update this page and view our page and now we see that this is perfect the text is above the horizon this is rounded and if we scroll down, this is looking really good in the sky right here. The next thing that we're going to do is our services page. So all we have to do is exit out of here 
and then click on this W to go back and then click on services. And on this page, I want to show you something super cool that this theme is compatible with. If we open up a new tab and we go to wordpress.org forward slash patterns and press enter, we can see all of these different patterns right here. What are patterns? It's a really weird name, but patterns are basically just sections on our website. So we can search by clicking on any of these right here, or we can search up here. That say, for example, that the tyler.com doesn't have a lot of pricing tables. I have a couple, but maybe it's not the one that you want. So all you have to do is type in pricing. And then we can see all of these different pricing tables right here. And I admit most of these are ugly, but some of them are really good. Like I think this one is really good. So all we have to do is click on them and you can see that it is also just like tyler.com mobile friendly. So we can go like that and then we can scroll up and we can copy this pattern right here. So we can just press copy pattern and then we could go back to our services page and let's click on this document overview and let's see where we want to add it. Maybe we'll add it, let's say right here. So above the cover. So we'll click on it. We'll press this right here and we'll add before. Now that's going to give us a little paragraph right here. So all we have to do is paste that in. And now if we update that right here, we can open it up and see it. And if we scroll down, we have that beautiful pricing section right here. And of course you can change any of this text or anything else. So this is going to save you so much time. And it's the reason why you shouldn't make your own sections. You should just find the one that's pre-made already for you and just select it. And that will make creating your website so much faster. All right, but let's undo that because I don't actually want that on our website. And let's delete this paragraph. And we can close these different tabs up here because we don't need them anymore. And now let's get all of the images on the services page. So let's open this up. Again, all of these images are in the link below and then go to our services page and just drag these in here. So first we'll do this one. I think that's super cool. And then we'll do the next one, which is this guy surfing. Just drag that in there. And then the next one, this group of people here, and we'll do this one now which is this guy learning how to surf and for the bottom one it was the same one as the about page so we'll just press replace and open the media library and we'll click it and we'll select the image right here all right so let's just edit those images real quick for this one i want it to be a little bit lighter because it has so many colors so that we can see the navigation better so let's go to style and let's do an overlay i'm just going to do a white overlay and I'm going to make it about 30. That will make the navigation much easier to see. So we can just scroll down right here and click on it. And then we can go over to styles and then go to radius and do 30 and do that for the rest of the images here and 30 and then go here style and 30. All right, the last thing to do on this page is to remove that padding. Remember, the padding is a spacing. So we can click on it, go to style, and then go down. And we see this padding here, just remove it, and that will center it. And then we can make sure that this image is focused on the top by clicking on the settings here, and then just dragging it all the way up. Now, when we update that, we can view our page and we can see that this page is absolutely beautiful and it looks nothing like the template that we installed. So as you can see, the images really, really transform your site. The last page that we're going to do is the contact page. So all we have to do is close this right here and then click on the W to go back and then click on contact. Now we can find the contact image and just go back and go to contact and we can click hold and drag that image in there. And then we can scroll down and click hold and drag the bottom image right in there. And let's click on that image and let's change the position of it so we can go down here and let's just do it right. That looks pretty good to me and scroll down here. Let's open up this because I can't click on it properly. Click on cover and then go over here, scroll down. And let's do it like this. I know it's not changing much right now, but when we press update and we view the page, 
That looks super, super good to me. And if we scroll down, we're gonna have this form next. That's why it's not here right now. But if we scroll down, this looks perfect with the sand and then the water. I think that's super cool. All right, so we're all done with our images. We can close that right now. And we can close this too. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna complete your website. We're gonna learn how to change this up here, which is called the header. And we're gonna learn how to change this down here, which is called the footer. This is really gonna complete your website because you already know how to change all of this content, except for this form, which we're gonna get to later. But how do we change this header? How do we add a logo? How do we change the colors? How do we add a button? And how do we change the mobile menu background and colors also? All right, to do that, we're gonna exit out of here and we're gonna go into our dashboard by just clicking on this right here. And then we're gonna go to appearance and editor. And then we're gonna click on templates and manage all templates. This is the best way to get here. And all we have to do is search for something called pages. So if we scroll down, we can find pages, make sure it just says pages and we can click on it. Now we can press get started. And this is our page structure. So on every page, we have a header, we have the content, and we have the footer. Whatever we change here is gonna be changed across the entire website. So if we put a logo right here, it's gonna change for all of the different pages. If we change the color right here, it's gonna also change for all of the pages. If we wanna change this header, all we have to do is open up the overview document and click on these three dots right here and go to replace header. So we've built tons and tons of headers, so you should never have to build one yourself, although you can. And a good way to search for these headers is just to look right here, or you can go to tyler.com. And if we scroll down right here, we can see all of the different names of the templates, and that corresponds with all of these different headers right here. And we can find one that we like. I think I like this one called Sky because it has this cool button up here. So let's exit out of here and we can search for Sky and we can click on it. And maybe we can change this. We can say free quote or something. And then we can press save and then press save again. And remember that's gonna show across our entire website. So let's go to our website and now we can see that across our entire website. So if we go to about services, we'll see it and contact, we'll see it. All right, that is super cool. We can exit out of there and let's actually undo that by pressing Control Z if you're on a PC or Command Z if you're on a Mac, and we can undo it just like this. The next thing that we're gonna learn how to do is how can we add a button ourselves? So the way we do that is we can click on this navigation right here, and then we can open up this settings panel here, and let's click on it again. And then we can press this plus button to add a button. Maybe we want a call to action to contact us. We don't just want a regular contact link. We want a button so we can search for button and we can click on it. And now we have this button right here. There is an issue when this happens and that's that it makes a button down here and we don't want a button down there. And that's because this navigation and this navigation are linked together. All right, but let's get to that later. Let's add in some content right here. I'm just gonna put in contact like that. And then I'm gonna modify it a little bit by clicking on the style right here. And for the background, I'm gonna make the background transparent. So I'm gonna click on this right here and we can make it any color. Let's just make it black and we can drag this over so it becomes see-through. After that, we can click on outline and then we can go down here and we can add more options by clicking on this three dots right here. And I'm gonna go to appearance and that's gonna add it right there. And instead of default, I'm gonna make it semi bold so it's a little bit bolder. And then for the radius down here, I'm gonna put in 13 so it's a little bit more rounded. And then maybe I'll make this font a little bit bigger by clicking on this and we can just drag this up or down. Maybe I'll make that about, I don't know, 15. And the next thing that we need to do is link it to the contact page. So just click on it right here and then press this link button and then type in contact and select it. And now we can save that and press save again and then go ahead and open up a new tab and check out your website. So now we have this super cool contact that's transparent 
and it links to the contact page. And that looks pretty awesome, except for there is two problems. And one is that there's a duplicate contact right here. And the other is that it mirrors it down here and it looks terrible. So let's fix both of these problems. We can go back to our website and we wanna delete this contact, which is super easy. All we have to do is go over to contact and click on remove contact and that will remove it. But we still have the problem here where this navigation is mirroring this one. So we need to somehow unlink them. All we have to do is click on it and click on it again, and then go over here and create a new menu. This is a super good idea because sometimes you want different pages in your footer menu, like your privacy policy or your terms of service that you don't want on your main menu. So this is a really good idea. All we have to do is press this plus button and click on page link, and then just start typing in your pages. So I'm gonna start typing in home, add another page, page link, about, add another page, page link, services, add another page, page link, and contact. Now these two won't link together, and if we click on save and save again, and refresh our page right here, and we can see that it adds right here, and it looks super, super good being transparent. I really like that, and it's different down here. So we can have different navigation, and it looks super awesome. It also works on the mobile version of your website automatically, so that's super awesome also. We can exit out of there, and we can exit out of here, and of course, we can do the same thing for the footer. So we can click it and change it however we want. Maybe we don't want this copyright here, that date's wrong anyways. So we can put in like 2025 and maybe you don't want my name. You can put by whatever your name or whatever your business is. And then we can press save and save all of those changes. The next thing that we can learn right now is how to change the mobile menu. So like how you change the colors and everything like that. All we have to do is click on the menu right here and click it again. And then we can go over to style right here and let's exit out of this so we have more room. And right here you can change like the text and the font and everything and make it bigger or smaller for any of these items. So right now we'd be able to change the color by just clicking on it and clicking on it again and we can change all of this right here. We can also change the background right here if we want by clicking on it and clicking on it again and changing you know, the background. We can clear any of those selections by clicking here and pressing reset and reset. And we can also change something called the submenu overlay text and the submenu overlay background. Now, what is this? If we go to our menu right here, let's just go to our menu and we click hold and drag the menu item in it will indent under a different menu item and then you can hover over you can barely see it right now but you can hover over and you can see that it's a sub menu all right i don't want to do that right now so i'm just gonna put it back to how it was but that's what a sub menu is and we can go back here and we can change the sub menu and overlay background now usually this isn't all that important because most people don't have a bunch of sub menus however if we click on it and we select a color let's say we want the color text to be white and then we go over to background and say we want this text color to be some sort of blue and we press save and save again we're gonna see that if we go back to our website it looks like nothing has changed, right? But if we go and make it the size of a cell phone and open up that menu, we can see that it's changed right here. So that's how you control the colors for your mobile menu. All right, now we can exit out of there. The next thing that we're gonna do is super exciting. We're gonna learn how to change not only this title right here, but we're gonna learn how to put in a logo right here and also a logo at the footer right here. We're also gonna learn how to put in something called a site icon, which is gonna make your website look super polished and super professional and that's this little icon up here. So when people have a whole bunch of tabs open, they're gonna be able to see your icon up here instead of this W. All right, so let's close this right here. And to change your logo, all we have to do is go up here and click on your website name, and then go to appearance, and then editor, and then click on templates, and then manage all templates, and then click on pages. Find the one that just says pages and nothing else. So just click on pages. And now what we can do is we can click on this up here and then click on it again. And here you can actually change your site title if you wanted to. So you can just type in whatever you want and then you can go to style and you can change the color and how big it is and everything else. But you probably want to make a logo. So let's go over here and let's open up a new tab and we're going to go to logomaker.com. L-O-G-O-M-A-K-R with no E dot C-O-M and press enter. 
Then you can click on start my design and create a new design. And for me, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get an icon. There are over 3 million icons right here. So I'm just gonna type in wave, W-A-V-E, because mine's about surfing and a wave would be cool. So it has hundreds and hundreds of wave icons. I'm just gonna select this one because I think it's pretty cool. There is an issue here though, where the wave is going off of the website. So imagine the logo is gonna be like over here and the wave is going like this way. I want the wave to be pointing into the website. So we can just click on these three dots right here and we can flip this horizontally. All right, that's perfect. All we have to do now is just click, hold and drag and we can also click, hold and drag to resize if we go in this corner right here. And then I wanna put in some text. Now this would be your business name, but I'm just gonna type in surf cause I think that's cool. And then I'll resize it by just click, hold and dragging here. And then on the corner, just click, hold and drag. And I like to make this about the size of the icon. And then just click off of it and click, hold and drag and drag it to where you want. I like to make both of these the same color. So I'm just gonna click, hold and drag and select both of them. And then I can change it to any color that I want. But maybe for this, I'll change it to a dark blue. So I'll just go over here. That looks pretty good. And maybe what I'll do is I'll make the icon a little bit smaller. I can waste so much time trying to get it perfect, but just know that done is better than perfect. All right, to me, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna use my arrow keys to make it really good. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save that. So I'm just gonna save this up here, save this logo. And then we can see this logo on all of these different products right here, which is pretty cool. We can click on download options if we wanna buy the full resolution logo. This is based off of math. So you can enlarge your logo as big as a billboard without losing any quality. Or we can download the regular resolution right here and just click on it, enter in our email, accept the terms and send the file to your email. Once we do that, we can open up our email. So I'm just gonna go to gmail.com. All right, and we have our downloadable file right here. We can just download the file and it will download. Just click, hold and drag that to the desktop. And now that we have that file, let's go ahead and get our site icon. Your site icon has to be the same width and height in order to fit up here. So what we can do is we can just delete this right here and we can just make this bigger. And because this is the same width and height, we can go ahead and press save. Then again, we can get the regular resolution right here and put in our email address, accept the terms and send the file. And then we can once again, check our email and show the email and we can download the file once again and just click hold and drag that to our desktop. All right, once we have the two files, we can exit out of here and exit out of here and then exit out of here. And we can click on this icon right here after we selected our title and we can make it into a site logo. Once we do that, we can click hold and drag our main logo into the website and just let it go. And then we can resize it right here. So maybe we want it to be 160 or 161. We can change that here. And then what we can do is we can scroll down and we can click on this variations right here and then we can delete it. So just select it and press delete and then type forward slash. This is gonna allow us to put in anything and then put in site logo. And once we have it there, maybe 120 is fine. What we can do is we can go to align and align at center. And now that will be centered. And then we can press save up here and press save again. Once we do that, let's preview our site. So let's view our site and we can see that our logo is right here and it's looking super awesome. Our logo is also down here and that's super cool. If we scroll back up again and go to a different page, we can see that it works on every single page. And the cool thing about Logo Maker is that this logo is see-through, so it's gonna look really, really great with all of your backgrounds. And we can check and see how this looks on mobile. So we can just go down and we can see that that looks beautiful on mobile. This also looks beautiful on mobile and it automatically works perfectly. There is an issue though, a very simple issue to fix and that is that it put our logo up here as a site icon and to me that doesn't look great and that's why we downloaded the other version of the logo so that it does look great all we have to do is go back 
right here and then just click on our logo up here and then go over here and where it says use as site icon we can uncheck that and then we can save that press save again and then go to site icon settings right here that's going to open up a new page and now we can go over here and go to select site icon and then upload files and just click hold and drag that site icon that we made on logo maker and press select right here and we can skip cropping because it's already square and then we can click on publish and we can exit out of here and we can also exit out of here now when we click on refresh we're going to see this beautiful site icon on our website and our beautiful logo on our website the next thing that we're going to do is set up your contact form so we can go to our contact page and if we scroll down, people can get in contact with you by calling you or emailing you right here. But wouldn't it be nice to have a form right here that we can fill out and press send and it'll go right into your email. The issue is, is that WordPress doesn't by default have a contact form that you can just put into your website. But the beautiful thing about WordPress is that we can install something called a plugin and that will act like a little program on our website that allows us to have a contact form right here. So let's go ahead and install that plugin. So all we have to do is click on our website name up here and then go to plugins and then click on add new. So there are thousands and thousands of plugins and that's what makes WordPress great. If we click on popular, we can see the different popular plugins. So there's like SEO, there's WooCommerce, which allows you to make a store for your website. There's WP Forms, which we're gonna be installing in a second. And there's backup plugins. So for almost literally anything that you wanna do, there's a plugin for it. And that makes WordPress so flexible that you can do anything with it. For this one, let's install WP Forms, W-P-F-O-R-M-S. And then we can see that this one was installed 5 million times with 13,000 five-star reviews. Then we can just press install now to install it onto our website and then click on activate to activate it on our website. Once we activate it, we can see that it's installed over here and it's also popped up with this screen right here that we can scroll down and just press create your first form. Then we can press let's go right here and it's giving us five minutes to do it, which is a weird thing, but we can exit out of there. And then we can scroll down and we can use a template. Let me just exit out of here right now. And I just wanna make a simple contact form. So I'm just gonna press use template. Once we do that, we can see over here, it says settings. Let's go ahead and click on that. And we can name our form instead of simple contact form. We could just name it contact form. And what we wanna do is click on notifications. And what we wanna do is scroll down and it's gonna ask us, where do we wanna send all of the information that people fill out? Now, right here is a short code that tells it that it's gonna put in the admin email, which is probably your email. But just in case, you can just type in your email right here. And then the subject line is what it's gonna say when it emails you. And then the from name, this should be your business name. And then the from email, it's throwing up this error right here because the admin email is your regular email, but it's not coming from your regular email, it's coming from your website. So it basically tells you what to do right here and we can just copy it and paste it right here. So we can just copy this and paste it here and that will get rid of that message right there. And then this reply to is they're gonna enter in their email on the form and then you'll be able to reply to them after they've filled out your form and then the email message is going to have all the fields of the form email to you all right if none of that made sense just copy exactly what i did and press save right here the next thing that we want to do is change the fields so we can go over here and we can click on the name for example and maybe we want to change this format a little bit maybe we want it to be more simple not ask for the first name and last name and maybe we want this field to be a little bit larger so we can go to advanced and the field size can be large and we can do that for the email also so just click on it go to advanced field size large and that will make it go all the way across this one already goes all the way across so we don't need to do it for that one and we can also add fields to this so we can go over to add fields and let's say we wanted to ask people how they heard about us so we can just click hold and drag this anywhere and let's drag it right there and we can click on it and we can change it we can say how did you hear about us and our first choice can be from friends and the second choice can be from search engines 
And the third choice can be from social media. So this might be a good way to track how your marketing is working. But if you don't want something like this, we can just press delete and we can delete it from there. And then we can press save. All right, once that's saved, we can exit out of there and we can go to our pages over here and we can go to contact right here and let's exit out of here and let's open up this document overview and scroll down to where the contact form is. And if we click on it, we can see that it's already in there. And that's because on the tyler.com website, these forms are already in there. So we can just click on it. And if you don't see it, if it's not in there, you can just go back to tyler.com and copy that section and paste it in right here. But once we do that, we can click on it and we can go to form and we can select the contact form. Now this and each contact form on tyler.com is styled individually. So this needs to be styled through code. So I think if we scroll down right here and go to advanced, we can see that it has a bunch of CSS code that was already made for you guys. So if you don't like this style right here, you can go to tyler.com and go to any contact page and just copy and paste that style. All right, but that looks really good. So we're gonna update that. And now we're gonna view our page and now we can exit out of here and we can scroll down and we see this beautiful contact form that people can fill out. So I'll just put in Tyler and an email like hey at tyler.com and a message. Then once I do that, I can click on submit and it will submit it. And it says, thanks for contacting us. We'll be in touch with you shortly. So now we can go to our email and see if that contact form is there. And we see that we have that there and we have the message there and we see that it did send to us. So this is super great. If we hit reply, it's gonna send back to whatever the user put in for their email address and we can just start a conversation just like this. So that's how you install a contact form so that people can get in touch with you. The next thing that we're gonna do is super cool. You may have noticed that our fonts on our website is different on the tyler.com island template font. So we can go over to template information and we can see that the heading is a Prada font and the text is a Work Sans font. If we go back to the main tyler.com website, we can see that all of these fonts are different. So you can find any any font that you like. All of these templates are using Google fonts. So Google has hundreds and hundreds of different free fonts and you can use whatever font that you want. So again, we can go to template information and see what font I'm using for that template. Once we do that, we can go back to our website and the beauty of WordPress is that we can get a plugins font. So we can just go into our dashboard and then go to plugins and then click add new plugin and we can just search for a fonts plugin. So we can just type fonts plugin and the fonts plugin is called fonts plugin, Google fonts typography. We can see that it's been activated 200,000 times with 1,000 five star reviews and we can just click on install now. Once we click install, we can click on activate to activate our plugin. And then we can go over here where it says customize fonts and just click on it. And now under basic settings, we can change our font. So you can change the font for your entire website by going to base typography and changing the font. So there are hundreds and hundreds of different fonts, over a thousand different fonts actually. And we can do something super crazy like rock salt. Now I definitely don't recommend this. Or we can do something else like Roboto Mono. And we can just keep on trying different fonts, maybe like Road Rage over here. And that looks pretty cool. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick with the font of this template and I'm just gonna use Prada for the heading and Work Sans for the text. What's the difference between heading and text? If we go to our website, we can see that this is the heading, this is the heading, this is the heading, and this is the text. So we can change it for the heading and the text. So for the base typography, I'm gonna make it Work Sans because that's gonna be all of the text right here. And for the heading, I wanna change it. So I'm gonna change that to Prata. And that makes it look a little bit more fancy. So I really like that. I think the fonts really polish off your website and that is looking super good. So we can go ahead and publish that and exit out of there. Then we can go to our main website and click on refresh. And now we can see all of our fonts and it's looking super, super good. All right, so let's exit out of tether.com and we are pretty much done with our website. 
It's looking super great, but how do we back up all of our hard work? In order to do that, once again, we can rely on plugins and we can do it for free. So we can go into our dashboard right here and then go to plugins and then click add new plugin. Now, if you didn't know what it was called, you could just search for something like backup, but I have a favorite backup plugin. And so I'm just gonna type in all in one. Then we can go down here and look for all in one WP migration downloaded 5 million times with four and a half stars. Then we can click on install now and we can click on activate. Now over here, we're gonna see the all in one WP migration. We can click on it. And then we wanna just simply export this out to a file and it's gonna prepare our entire website. So it's packing up our entire website so that we can download it. All right, now it's done. So we can just press download and we can download this entire website. And now we always have a backup at this point. So you don't need to worry about messing something up or deleting your website or doing something wrong because you always have a backup. So I'm just gonna click hold and drag this to my desktop and I have a backup. Awesome. Now I can just close this and there's one last thing to do. If we go over to our website, when we hover over our website name, it just says create a website or it just says your business name right here. It's super good for the search engines to have a website description. So in order to change your website and add a website description, all we have to do is go into the back end of our website and then go to settings and general. So we have our site title right here and we need a tagline. We need to describe our website so that the search engines can find it. You may be wondering what to put here. So I made a little tagline generator on my website. If you go to tyler.com forward slash tagline dash generator, and press enter. The link for this will be also in the description below. And then we can scroll down and we can simply describe our business and it will make a bunch of taglines for us. So we can select any one that we want. I like learn surfing in Malibu. So I'm just gonna click on that one and it's gonna copy to my clipboard and then go over here and just paste it right here. Once we're done with that, we do not want to change this because it will break our website and we want to scroll down and press save changes. Then we can exit out of tyler.com and now we can go back to our website and when we hover over our website name, it says our business, then learn surfing in Malibu. And this is super helpful in order to get ranked higher in the search engines. All right, congratulations. You are done with your website. You should be super proud of yourself. You've done better than 90% of people most people cannot complete their website and actually most people wouldn't even start making their website they wouldn't even try sometimes i hear people talking about making their website for years and years and years i'm like this could have taken a couple of hours it's so easy I don't understand. All right, there's one last thing that is optional. If you wanna view your website as your visitors would see it and you wanna log out, you can. So all you have to do is hover over your name right here and press log out. Then we can go back to our website and we are done creating your website. Congratulations. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe. I'm Tyler Moore. Thank you so much.